In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Reflection, refraction, put together with one or two drops of water. You can get a rainbow. But do we ever look at the technical definition of a rainbow? When we see a rainbow, is it not something that we admire, maybe even think back to our youth when someone told us that there was a pot of gold there at the rainbow? And maybe later on when we said if we, if we saw that rainbow, there would be good wishes at least, but maybe a change in fortune. Maybe something good is going to happen because I saw the rainbow. We throw the technical definition away because we want to imagine that there is something quite beautiful about a rainbow that is also associated with God above. In the story we heard from the Old Testament, it was an actual rainbow, one that uh, was seen after a great catastrophe, and Noah marveled at the rainbow and the chance of new beginnings. But I believe there was also a rainbow at Jesus' baptism. Now, I don't mean a technical rainbow. But I believe it signified for us the rainbow of grace. I believe that it was something that was given that we can understand as a beautiful experience from God. I believe in rainbows. And I believe that that was a rainbow of grace that says something to us as we begin our journey in Lent toward Easter. A rainbow that says, you're okay. Well, God, I know I'm not okay. No, no, you're all right. Well, God, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you through Jesus uh, when I kind of clean myself up. But, you know, a few people know about me, but I, no, no. The rainbow is for you. This rainbow of grace is for you now just as you are. You don't need to clean up to come to me. If there's any cleaning up to do, I'll help you with that. But just come. Come to me. It's amazing how many people hold back because they say, I believe a just God could not accept me. I don't know, if you've never played golf or you don't know much about golf, you probably would find a golf ball that is really a good golf ball and wish to throw it away. Because you'd see all of the pock marks. Actually, in golf, they're called dimples. But it looks like that golf ball has had it. It looks like that golf ball can't be used anymore. It looks like there's so many dings in it that you need to get one that's nice and smooth. But a nice and smooth golf ball is what you don't want. However, you can hit one 160 yards, but you can hit a dimpled ball twice that far. And I believe sometimes God can take beat up people and do something more with them because, because they are who they are and they admit who they are, then someone who goes around and says, I really don't need God that much. I've got it all together. No. The rainbow of grace offered us at the beginning of Lent says, come. Just come now and come as you are. And the rainbow of grace 
that bids us to come under is a rainbow of gentleness. Please understand God's rainbow of grace is not something that is going to beat you over the head. When we're called to witness the good grace of Jesus, we're not called to intimidate a person. We're called to tell the good news. Just to tell the good news. And the good news is God's wonderful love. Gentleness. Gentleness always wins. We go through stages in our existence when we say, I, I, I just don't believe it's going to work this time. We've, we've got to move beyond being so gentle. We've got to put our foot down. Yes, you've got to be indefatigable while being gentle. I remember when Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated, a large number of people were already turning against him. Because they said, this is no way to do it. You can't do it. You can't be nonviolent. If you're going to get a point across, you can't be gentle. Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the peacemakers. Did you notice he didn't say, blessed are the peacekeepers? Now, we need peacekeepers to be sure. But if we had enough peacemakers, we wouldn't need so many peacekeepers. The grace of God comes to us as a wonderful rainbow that's coming to us in peace. Don't let anybody tell you the reason you need to come to Jesus Christ is because you're going to hell if you don't. You're buying an insurance policy. You've got to come through the love of God. You've got to come because you know God loved you so much that Jesus Christ came and hung on a cross and died for you. See, that, that's the beautiful rainbow. That's the beautiful rainbow of grace. Did you notice sometimes when you try to get to God, God is already there. There's a movie out some years ago. Tom Booker, I think, was the fellow's name. He was a horse whisperer, uh, played by Robert Redford. And, and there was one very dramatic scene where the New York Times reporter had brought her daughter's horse for the horse whisperer to try to tame because he was a wild, wild horse. And they were just inside the stall when her phone rang. The horse busted out and ran to the end of the pasture and started trembling, just traumatized by that phone. The horse whisperer went out to the middle of the field and sat down. And she said, it, it seemed like he didn't move for a couple of hours. He just sat there. And gradually the horse would come closer, closer, and closer, until the horse would nudge, and he took the horse back. Beautiful scene. But I think it's sometimes that way with us with God. We run away. And God is patient. God is patient, and we come back little bit by little bit, and God is saying, welcome, welcome, come, come, come. So many times we search for God. He's already there. We just haven't found Him yet. That wonderful, wonderful rainbow of grace above us also telling about a God who doesn't keep score. God gives you the wonderful gift of eternal life and it begins now. And He doesn't put any strings attached. No. That wonderful gift 
The most gracious gift has no strings attached. Have you known of someone who would give a gift to somebody and they expect something from it? Count Basie, that jazz great, was visiting and uh, at the home where he was, the, the group was getting together to go to some kind of a party. And uh, he didn't bring his wardrobe with him. So Count Basie said, I, I guess I'm, I'm not going to go along. I, I don't want to look shabby. I, you know, everybody else is, is dressing up. And, uh, but Mouth Page, Mouth Page played the trumpet. He, he was a fellow about the same size. And, and so he said to Count Basie, you know, why don't you just take one of my suits? Well, Count Basie liked that idea because he had some really sharp suits, some really nice clothes. But he said it was the worst decision he ever made. He said, mouth hung around him all the time. Oh, don't lean on that. Do you see that dust there? Oh, oh don't, 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 don't sit in that chair. He said he couldn't wait to get home to get that suit off. We don't need to be like that with God. God gives that gift so abundantly, so freely, that He's asking nothing in return, just your love. Yes, there's a rainbow for us this Lent. You sometimes think of Lent as drudgery. Oh my gosh, I have to discipline myself to pray and I have to read the scripture more and I have to do this and I have to give up so oh no no what if you wanted to do those things because you had been given a gift of grace a gift of a beautiful rainbow of love. What if it just happened that instead of feeling like you'd been through it by the time you get to Easter, you feel like you can't wait to experience the wonderful story of God's love for you under the rainbow Amen.